Some things said in this video are personal suspicions and feelings. None of what I discuss has been settled in a court of law. What I am able to prove are exchanges that come from my own personal accounts on my personal cell phone. I encourage you to take all the evidence I provided here in my previous video on Twitter, as well as the multiple testimonies from witnesses to the suspected stalking and harassment, and draw your own conclusions. Thank you. Hey guys, today I'm going to prove that the screenshots I featured in my original video about Shannon are real. Obviously, there are a few screenshots that I can't prove or I can only kind of half prove because Shannon and Anthony deleted their Twitter accounts. Because they did that, even though I was able to retrieve my Twitter data, their responses are still removed from our exchange. The good news is I do still obviously have the original screenshots that I took when Anthony's Twitter account was still active and I can line up those responses with my Twitter data and my response. Some other good news is that because Shannon reactivated her Instagram, I am able to go on and prove that that whole conversation we had was a real conversation and it came directly from the real Shannon. It actually worked out really well for me that Shannon came back to Instagram because now I can prove that these screenshots are real and all these troll accounts saying that it was actually me who was stalking Shannon and Anthony for all this time can stuff it. I also saw some lies being spread about about how after Anthony and I broke up, I wouldn't let it go and I wouldn't leave him alone and all he wanted was for me to leave him alone, which is obviously like the opposite of the truth because I have screenshots proving that Anthony and I, like I stated in my original video, had a, a flirtation ship then a professional relationship all the way up until about 2015. I think what a lot of people are failing to realize is that this took place over the course of many years years. Even after Anthony R-worded me, I still continued to have a friendly relationship with him, a close, toxic, codependent relationship with him. And even though it wasn't like a committed or serious relationship, I still associated with him because he fully convinced me that it was just like an embarrassing moment for me. It was something him and I just needed to move past. And I was ashamed of it, so I believed that. It was not until years later in a therapy session that I finally came to terms with the fact that it was our word. I was intoxicated. I was in and out of consciousness. That is what makes it our word. I've seen a few channels say that he broke into my home, and if you go back and listen to what I actually said, I never said that. When we were, um, Andrew and I were kind of still in a, a flirtatious place. Um, at one point, he had come over. Um, I was at my dad's house. Um, I had been using. Um, he crawled through my window. I've discussed this before. That is how I got people in and out of my room secretly. He climbed in through my window, um, and he had sex with me while I was incredibly... Um, and obviously intoxicated by way of heroin. I was um, nodding off. I was incoherent. Um, and I only, whether it be from being on drugs or it being a trauma, I only remember bits and pieces of it. I clarified that we were in a kind of flirtatious place and that my window was how I let friends in and out and that he came over and I was intoxicated and he R-worded me. I fully admit that I did not explain it well, but my emotions, when I say they were like so on high when I recorded that video, I, I it was a miracle I was able to get through it. I had to stop on numerous occasions. So I fully admit that yes, I didn't really explain it very well. I feel like most channels though understood that he did not break in. I just let him in through my window. It was a purposeful action. The thing that made it in our word, and I've clarified this multiple times, is because I was intoxicated, visibly intoxicated. In case this wasn't already common knowledge, but if someone is visibly intoxicated, they cannot consent. So Shannon telling Tipster that what happened to me is provably false is impossible. She was not there. She was not part of the equation. She did not have my blood to test it for drugs. Coming forward with this was not a victory for me. 
This is something that I struggled with, that I dealt with, that I was traumatized by for years. Because when you know someone is watching your every move, everything you say is being recorded, someone is actively looking for your address, for your phone number, for where your kids go to school, you do not get a moment of peace. And I did all of the things you are quote unquote supposed to do when you are being stalked, when you are being harassed, when you have been R-worded and I was turned away. I was discouraged. Even though things lined up and everything pointed in one direction, it didn't matter because most of it was online. So people turned their noses up at it and acted like this was senseless girl drama. Like my own peace of mind, my comfort, my safety didn't matter. Shannon and Anthony got really good at covering up their digital footprint. But I think they gravely underestimated how much I was recording, how much I was screenshotting, how much I was saving. They got bold and bolder and bolder. And then when Shannon's YouTube channel started taking off and she started making money, it started to ease off. And I think that's why she used the Brita Filter account to try to get me to forget all this ever happened. Because now her career was at stake. I think Shannon and Anthony did a lot of the harassing together, but I also think they did some harassing separately. And I think they hid things from one another. So if Shannon's sitting there gobsmacked at some of these accusations I'm throwing out, how about instead of pointing the finger at me, someone who has everything to lose? My career, my reputation, my livelihood. I knew that by coming forward, I could be taking food out of my children's mouths. But I did it anyway because I was not going to live like that anymore. I had everything to lose by coming forward. Instead of pointing the finger at me, maybe take a second and take a look at the person who's sitting next to you. Look at their computer. Look at their sock accounts. Look on their hard drive. Who knows Anthony? What does he have to lose? I'm sorry I went off on a little bit of a tangent there. There are just things that I feel like really needed to be said. Um, for the receipts, there is some sensitive information, whether it be pertaining to me or to someone else in some of these messages. So obviously those things are blurred out. Last names are blurred out. Any identifying features for people who are not involved in this situation in any way are blurred out. So please keep that in mind. Otherwise, on to the receipts. Okay, so this is my phone. Um, here, sorry, there are like two flies I accidentally let in this room. There are my messages. You can see that I've been going back and forth with people for a while. My mom just talking about buying a piece of furniture. Okay. Her messages. Um, let's start with Twitter. This is my Twitter, my profile. Let's go to messages. Oh, I'm already all the way scrolled down, but in case you guys need proof, let's go there. 21. There. Sorry, I'm used to cutting, so if I pause. Scrolling down, 21, 2019, all the way down to the bottom here. Here's Briar Witch Girl I had mentioned, sending me some old artwork I did, kind of making fun of it. I just say that's nice. They make fun of it. I say, yes, it was horrible. So there's, oops, so there's one. Here's another one. This is the Asia, not viral Emily, sending me my stats not understanding how the YouTube algorithm works. And then, so you paid for me. No, I actually didn't. Sure, these are all the screenshots I included, so I'm not gonna hang around on them too long. There's Aja, there's Brianna Lang. Go to the top here, telling me it looks like I'm wearing a hijab. He's saying, no, I'm not. Another channel, Creep Show Art. Just 
Can I get me on? So there, this account was the one that was featured in one of Shannon's videos. At least one person in this galaxy thinks I bought my views and I bought my subscribers, which means someone in this galaxy thinks I'm made of such wealth and such opulence that I bought myself subscribers. I mean, thank you. Uh, notice the peach, the, excuse me, the peach, the, the speech patterns are very different. They talked, you know, in like internet slang in the other video, in, like all caps or something. So that's unusual. Oh, let me click on these accounts to show you. Zero followers, last, they, you know, 2018 to make it look least sort of real. Not really back briar witch girl i don't think they did anything nope um then brita filter here we go the person posing you don't know me it's my brother he's been a fan of you you know all of that i don't know when you started posting i'm so sorry me asking to prove they're real what has happened, the legality of it. Yeah, there's that one. Click on the account, one follower, who may that be? Don't know. Yeah. So when I was able to go back and get my Twitter data, I was able to find my responses from this screenshot. But like I mentioned before, because Anthony deleted his Twitter, his messages and responses, even in the Twitter data, are gone. I went ahead and screenshotted the whole screen to show you that I am getting this information from my Twitter data and not from my DM inbox. I said, my husband doesn't like me being in touch with my exes that I wasn't in touch with when we met, i.e. basically every one of them. That is why I keep blocking you. I know you're the one who has been harassing me all this time. Just please take care of yourself. This is not healthy. I'm not trying to be cold. I'm just being honest. And the thing about my husband not wanting me to be in touch with any exes is a total lie. This is another really good example of the tend and befriend response. I didn't know what his mental state was like at the time. I knew that he was angry at me. I was almost certain he was the one harassing me all this time and I didn't want to poke the bear. So I just lied to him with this classic out of, oh, my boyfriend doesn't want me talking to my exes so that hopefully he would just leave me alone. And I don't know if he responded to that first message or I just decided to follow up about 30 minutes later because he wasn't responding, but I don't have a screenshot of a message in between the first and second message. And the message I do have a screenshot of seems like he is responding to both the first and second message here. The second message says, I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd care because we didn't really talk anymore. I didn't realize you hold so much hostility towards me. I don't for you. What's so sad is I still played your music for people all the way up until I realized it was you. Like, even though we stopped talking, I still supported your music. I don't know why you're so angry at me and why you've tried to fuck up everything for me. I don't know why you just won't leave it alone. And then I follow up with, we loved each other once and I don't know why we can't just respect that love, be civil, and go our separate ways. Some further proof that the screenshot of Anthony's messages isn't fake is you can see that in my Twitter data, I have the same misspelling of our. I spell it out by accident. And you can see in the screenshot where the bottom of my message is cut off, it also says out. Anthony responds, harassing? No, I've only posted in what my accounts are. Like, what has my face on it? And I'm not angry. I was just curious. I figured maybe if I get more ridiculous, I'd get a response. I wanted to see where your stuff went, which is why I was bummed you blocked me. But no, I'm not angry at all. Thank you for the reason, though. Much appreciated. Good luck out there. What I find super suspicious now that I look back at it, I didn't mention anything about sock accounts in this conversation. So I don't know why he felt the need to clarify that he only uses accounts with his face on them when I didn't say a word about sock accounts until 
after he messaged this. Now, I had previously mentioned to him in passing that I was receiving a lot of hate on my social media, but that would have been years before this conversation took place. And since it was just in passing, I didn't go into detail about what kind of accounts were harassing me. And because I didn't go into detail about who was sending me hate, for all he knew, it could have been someone I knew in real life. So why put that detail in when he had very little knowledge of the people sending me hate? And again, when I had mentioned this to him, it would have been years prior to this conversation. This is why I believe that it might have been Shannon responding to me. Shannon is many things, but stupid is not one of them. She's clearly developed a very quick wit and the ability to have an answer for everything. I urge you to compare the language in this exchange to the language in the exchange between Shannon and I in October 2018. A lot of deflection, a lot of explaining, a lot of excuses, but very little defensiveness. I feel like if you were being accused of something, especially something like harassment of another person, that you would immediately get defensive and angry. But every time I accuse Anthony or Shannon, instead of getting frustrated, they go immediately into trying to clear their name and giving a multitude of reasons why it couldn't be them. Just food for thought, back to Twitter. In this response, I give Anthony an, at the time, recent example of some suspicious behavior coming from his personal accounts. I say, on Instagram, there was a post from someone talking about how angry I look in all my photos, which you then went on to say the same thing the same day, as well as like all their comments. Then I receive a message on Twitter from someone saying, I buy my subscribers, which you claimed in the same day as well. Both these accounts were freshly made slash very clearly fake accounts with one or zero followers. I know it may seem hard to believe, but I really don't receive much hate from the people who view my videos. It's rare. So it wouldn't make sense that you and these random accounts have the exact same sentiment and just happen to air those grievances on the exact same days. I've gotten good at fact checking over the years. And by the way, yes, my other videos did receive boosts in views during the time my You Are Not An Artist video went, as I corrected it, quote unquote, mini viral. Regardless of anything, even under the very unlikely circumstance that it is only your one account, it's still harassment to go to my viewers and try to discredit me by way of something you made up. It's a form of slander. It's actually libel because it's written. There is obviously nothing I can do about it. I'm just letting you know it's not productive or constructive. It's just fucking with someone for the sake of fucking with them. Again, after all this, I still wish you well. I'm just asking you to stop if this is you. If it isn't, then fine. There is nothing I can do otherwise, and I'm aware of this. I just thought I'd at least try and state my case, you know? And he never responded to that message. Now, this response that I sent is very important for two different reasons. I am part of the arts and crafts community here on YouTube. Do we get hate? Yes. Are there trolls in our community? Yes. Is our community just like any other community on the face of the internet, on the face of the planet? Yes. What typical hate comments look like for us is vastly different from the kind of hate and harassment and stalking I had been enduring from Shannon and Anthony. So I don't want people to think that I was just chalking up any hate comment to Shannon and Anthony because I do get other hate comments and they're much much more typical to the arts and crafts community on YouTube. Does that mean we are exempt from the really grotesque, vile, horrible comments? No, absolutely not. I'm just saying it's a little bit more far and few between. Most of the hate comments we're going to be receiving is about how our art isn't good, that we're lazy because we're not uploading more, that our content is lazy, that we're tracers. Like, <laughs> that is much more on par with the kind of hate and troll comments we are going to be receiving on a day-to-day basis basis. And I am not talking about constructive criticism or criticism or anything like that. Those things are valid. They are wanted. It is very important to have an audience that is willing to be critical and call you out when you make mistakes. That's good. That is not what I'm talking about. If I was taking every single hate comment that I've ever gotten and equating it to Shannon and Anthony, I would have a much longer than two hour video. Trust me. The other thing that was really important about that last message I sent to Anthony was that I asked him to leave me alone. I say directly to him, I'm just asking you to stop if this is you. I also said earlier, we loved each other once and I don't know why we can't just respect that love, be civil, and go our separate ways. Two instances there where I make it very clear that I just want to be left alone. 
That will be important in the courtroom because that is me saying, I want you to leave me alone. That is my declaration of fuck off. I don't think that's what it's called, but that's what I'm going to call it. I shared this screenshot on Twitter, but I will share it here. This is, again, from my Twitter data. Because Shannon deleted her Twitter account, I cannot see her initial message. This was obviously after I had confronted Shannon about potentially stalking me because this is in March of 2019 that she sent me this message that you obviously can't see. So unfortunately, you're just going to have to take my word for it. But when I confronted Shannon, she eventually blamed our mutual friend, Brandon. She randomly messaged me in March to let me know that quote unquote, Brandon had tried to hack into her commission email and that I should be aware of that. I don't know if that means that she was planning to try to hack into my email or do something to try to get to one of my other accounts. I don't know why she sent me that message. She may have just sent me that message to just throw me off the trail. At this point, I was fully convinced it was Shannon and Anthony that was stalking me, so I wanted to let them know without directly letting them know that I am keeping track of everything they are doing. So I said, I've received some strange DMs, but I'm beginning to think these specific DMs aren't from Brandon. The language is very different, but I can't be sure. I'm so sorry this is happening to you still. It's an absolute nightmare. Make sure you're screenshotting and saving every little thing he does. I've been doing it pretty much since the beginning and giving every little thing to law enforcement. Now, like I said in my original video, I have never been able to file a police report because nothing bad has actually happened to me physically because of the stalking. Gotta love America. But I have an in-law that's in law enforcement and has been in law enforcement for many, many, many years. I have made them aware of what's going on And I've also made my local PD aware of what's going on and told them some of the things that have happened to me. They absolutely will have record of me calling in and my in-law knows what's going on as well. So if anything ever happened to me, not only do I have an actual paper in my home that says if anything happens to me, maybe look into these people, law enforcement is also aware. Anyway, I said, they can't do much without his address, but I'm working on that. If I get any information, I'll be sure to pass it along to you so you can file a restraining order. This is just not okay, and I hope you stay safe. He's clearly very unstable. So that is Twitter for all the accounts that weren't deleted. Um, Let's go over to Instagram. Oop, I'm already here. But uh, let's see. There's my, let me prove I'm me. (laughs) Um, Here's my Emily Artful account. Coming over here, messages. We gotta go all the way to the bottom for Shannon, I'm pretty sure. Or at least close to the bottom here. There we go. Shannon. It is her real Instagram account. And these are these are many, so I'm just gonna scroll through them so you see. And none of them, like I'm stopping here just so I'll scroll up and stop so you know these aren't just a bunch of random conversations her and I had. Right? This was all one conversation. Again, the only two conversations that Shannon and I ever had, or excuse me, I guess it'd be three. It was the one that I was like, hey, could you maybe change your, you know, story time series name what was that one. Um, and then this, like, this is kind of one whole conversation where he, she's like, oh, sorry for posting about you, mentioning you in their story right there. Sorry about doing that. And then uh, me being like, hey, are you stalking me? I would count that as one whole conversation. And then the conversation on Twitter that I showed earlier, um, but since she deleted her account, I don't have access to that. I'm gonna click on this, show you it's really Shannon. No posts yet, except for this one. And I think those are the only screenshots that I am able to prove because the Other ones are all on their deleted accounts or Snapchat. So um, now Anthony, let's turn this on, Facebook Messenger, search. 
Anthony did delete his Facebook, but he does uh, confirm that it's him. Um, there are three matches for Anthony here. Um, this match right here, um, oops, let me bring this down. This match right here, I will include the screenshot somewhere over here. Here is the message I sent to Anthony's step-grandmother in November of 2017. This was right after my first son was born. So yes, they were harassing me the entire duration of my pregnancy. And if you guys remember, I really, really struggled with antenatal depression when I was pregnant with my first son. And this certainly didn't help. This is why I personally believe that they were trying to get me to kill myself. They knew how fragile I was at certain points in my life. And I feel like that is when they struck the hardest. I said, Hi, Grandma. I don't know if you would remember me, but I dated Anthony about six years ago. Since the termination of our relationship, I have reason to believe Anthony has been stalking slash harassing me using fake online accounts. Up until recently, I had no idea who was releasing my personal information online, harassing my employers, and threatening to ruin my life, relationships, and career. He recently decided to go after me using one of his personal accounts, which I believe he did by mistake. I'm looking to file a restraining order against him. Now that I have evidence that suggests it has been Anthony harassing me all these years, I'd like to do everything within my power to protect my family and myself. I recently gave birth to my first son and I'm afraid he will come after his personal information as well. I know this may seem random and confusing, but I haven't found any other way to protect myself. So this is why I'm messaging you. I believe I only need the county he currently lives in and his birth date. I remember he spoke of changing his surname from to Parker, but I'm not sure if he ever went through with that. Feel free to call me. My phone number is blank and I currently live in Nebraska. I moved hoping a fresh start in a new state would deter his aggression, but it doesn't seem to have done any good. Thank you, Emily. And because his step-grandma and I weren't friends on Facebook, I believe she never saw this message. Oh, and in case you guys were wondering why I censored Anthony's original last name, a few years back, Anthony let me know that he was in the process of changing his last name from to Parker, and he has only used Anthony Parker on all his public social medias. So for legal reasons, I'm censoring out his original last name. And then this over here is to a mutual friend of ours, <clears throat> and I asked the exact same thing. You know, I say, hey friend, I know it's random for me to reach out, but this is very important. I don't know how much contact you have with Anthony, but I need help with filing a restraining order against him. He's been harassing me for the last five years, literally nonstop. He has inappropriate photos of me, two of which would be considered child pornography since I'm only 15 in them, which he has been taunting me with. He will send me messages and say things like, it'd be a shame if people found out about these, or these are all over 4chan. Not only that, but he's gotten me fired from jobs because he's harassed my employers. He pretends to be random people to try and gain my trust, and he's harassed my family and my subscribers and followers. He just will not leave me alone. I've been hiding this for years, trying to just block and ignore, but since the birth of my son, he's become a bit more bold, and I honestly fear for my family's safety. He was physically violent when we were together, and I'm afraid that if something puts him over the edge, he could very well snap and drive to come and hurt me. He's tried relentlessly to find me to ruin me. I've been trying to file a restraining order, but I need an address or a workplace so he can be served the order. Since I live out of state, literally 1,700 miles away, it's a lot more complicated. I don't know if you still keep in touch with him or know someone who could help me, but you're the only person who has any connection. I know this is so random, and I'm sorry if this makes you uncomfortable, but I can't do this anymore. I don't want him to get in trouble. I just want him to leave me and my family alone. That's all I want. I can compile some proof for you if you need. I know this is sudden. Please find it in your heart to help me. I'm sorry this is so out of the blue. And, um... You know, our friend responds, um, and I don't want to invade his privacy. He basically just said, like, I, I barely know him. All I know is, like, he moved to Oregon and is living out of his car. Um, and I'm so sorry this is happening to you. Our friend was really kind and, and nice. It said he believes that men should be held accountable for their shitty actions. So um, I sent our friend this um, July 26, 2018, till 44 p.m., so... Um, there's that and then this Facebook user this is Anthony and you can see and what's interesting this is after um, 
I lost the other Facebook account. So it's uh, October 7th, 2013. And he says, holy shit, dude, you made another one. I'll talk to you in a year or two like I always do. Then we can do this again. Wish you all the best. Because we, again, we'd have infrequent contact. We'd have like one conversation every few months that was very long um, and in-depth. And then it would switch to text. And then we'd like get in an argument or whatever and stop talking. Um, and there's a lot of private information in this exchange. I am, you know, in and out of being sober, not sober this whole time. I am so sorry. Um, it's it just, it was hard to read. I do have, I, I went through this and took some screenshots, which I can put on screen. Maybe I'll pause it and put some on screen. Hey guys, future Emily here. I was trying to find a way to be able to prove to you that these screenshots are real without exposing the ass ton of personal, private, sexual, and sensitive information that was strewn throughout these messages. And I came up with this. I searched for one of the keywords in the screenshot so I would be taken directly to that message. And then I just scrolled all the way back up to prove that it comes from the same deleted Facebook account that is signed Anthony in 2013. With this method, I've got a little wiggle room so I can also show the dates that I wasn't able to capture in the screenshots. And it also shows you how long it takes me to scroll from the message all the way back to the beginning of the exchange. This way it makes it much easier for me to censor all that sensitive information while still proving to you that the screenshots are real. This way you can see all of the conversations that took place between the message I felt comfortable sharing and the beginning of the exchange. Even though they're blurred, you can see that there are a ton of them, especially as we go forward in time. And these screenshots, as well as the screenshots from Instagram that I show at the end of the video, are important because they show that Anthony and I had that progressive sexual to friendly to professional relationship all the way up until about 2016. Not only that, but it shows that he was initiating a lot of these conversations. Anyway, back to the video. So uh, I'm just going to show you when he first messaged me, you know, he signs literally his name Anthony. And I say it's a date. In all honesty, I feel some guilt for not kneeling down a time before. Just, oh my God, and so much like tip tippy toeing in these messages, but a lot of it just saying, you know, one of the reasons we got in a fight and I blocked him, I didn't want to talk to him anymore, was because he wanted to do some filming with his friend. And I said, you know, I might be able to go, but I'm not sure. And I never followed up and that made him upset. You know, I, I didn't nail down a date. And so I was apologizing for that. Now, these are not all the conversations I've ever had with Anthony. In fact, the vast majority of the conversations are going to be over text or just calling each other on the phone and having long discussions there. So Facebook Messenger was only a fraction of our general correspondence, but there is still a lot of stuff on Facebook Messenger. And I go in and out of sobriety throughout these messages. So just keep that in mind if I seem a little bit rambly or there's a lot of spelling errors. This first message, I believe I posted uh, like a artistic nude of myself on Facebook. Obviously, it couldn't be full nude or whatever because it was public and on my wall, but it was some artistic nude from a photo shoot. Anthony says, Emily, why are you naked again? LOL. And I get a little bit defensive because he was always very critical of what I did with my body. And I say, I really don't see a problem with it. I think a lot of people look down upon partial nudity more than full nudity. The female body is artistic. Every single separate body is art. I think everyone should have semi to full nude pictures of themselves to remind themselves of their own beauty and mortality. Underneath everyone is a naked pink sack of meat. And interestingly enough, Anthony says, did someone say something shitty to you again? And I said, no, why? And he said, you mentioned people have been lately, so I was just curious. How does your boy boyfriend feel about it. So here's confirmation that I obviously had mentioned the harassment to Anthony. What I find really interesting is that he equates me posting a lewd picture of myself to someone harassing me or bothering me. I just find that really out of place. I don't think that would be most people's first assumption. Obviously, I got a tiny bit defensive, but I was mostly obnoxiously waxing poetic. It wasn't like an angry message. So again, I just find it strange. Why would you bring that up unless you had something directly to do with it? Future Emily here again to make a correction. I took a 
ton of screenshots and I got these two screenshots mixed up after the fact. So when I went back to record the messages for a second time, I realized that I had gotten these two conversations mixed up. This screenshot actually came from this conversation. For context, Anthony had posted a rant on his Facebook, basically saying he refused to associate with anyone who will quote unquote do anything for money and fame. And he just sort of generally degraded sex work. And I had just started stripping again, so I thought maybe he heard through the grapevine that I was stripping again. We almost had no friends in common at that point, so I have no idea how he got that information. But it felt very pointed and directed at me because I had literally just started stripping again and then all of a sudden he posted this rant. So I panicked because I thought he was mad at me and I was still in that super toxic codependent friendship slash pseudo relationship with him. And I confronted him with these messages. I was just desperately trying to explain why I was stripping again because he regularly called stuff like this slutty and skanky. And you can see me degrade myself by being like, I know it's skanky, I'm so sorry. So codependent, so toxic. My heart aches for the girl that's in these messages, but I just wanted to make sure I came in and made those corrections. This next conversation continues to reinforce the idea that Anthony and I still talked and had a relationship with one another, even in 2014. If I really was the one stalking and harassing him and not being able to let it go, wouldn't he just ignore me? Or at least give me curt short answers instead of saying, dude, you gotta come over sometime so I can record you. I got a new mic and I want to hear how you sound on it. And I say, yes, I'm so down. What are you doing Sunday? He said, I'm free Sunday. Also, so does your number work still? I tried calling to ask you a question and it just kind of beeps. And then I go on to explain to him that my voicemail isn't working and we set up the date to record. So this was a gem to find because I knew that the original conversation about my voice, quote unquote, being better than Shannon's voice took place over text messages. So I thought the bulk of that was lost to time. But it looks like when Anthony reached back out to me, it was on Facebook Messenger. So this was on March 25th, 2014. Anthony says, hey, so it turns out you were pretty right. Your voice would fit way better. Would you still be interested in singing? Please let me know. Also, my phone's off to the first, so if you want to, just get a hold of me here. I said, yes, I can meet Thursday at four if you're available and possibly Sunday as well. He said, mm, yeah, four on Thursday works great. I said, see you then. Can I have the address? I'm pretty sure I remember, but just in case. And he gives me the address. And then later I checked in to see if we were still good. And I said, see you tomorrow. I'll talk more about this on my final video on the matter where I kind of compile all the evidence that we have so far and simplify things. But I wasn't clear about this in my first video. Anthony actually came to me with the song Stardust and wanted to know what I thought about the song in general. And he let me know that the vocals were probably just going to end up being placeholder vocals and he was looking for a singer to possibly replace them. So I was giving him the opinion that he asked for. I was just a little bitchy when I gave him my opinion. I was like, dude, yeah. Don't keep these vocals, they're weak, mine are better. Like to explain that a little bit better, that's kind of how the conversation went down. So it's not like I was just giving out my unsolicited opinion. He regularly would send me tracks and ask me what I thought about them. This was a very common occurrence. In fact, it was probably at least 30% of our exchanges. And here's a really good example of that. Conveniently, right around the time I start to kind of pull away from Anthony. You can see at the top, uh, like we had a conversation where I said, because, oh my God. And he said, no, ha ha ha. And then on June 26, 2014, he sends me a message and says, oh, I love your photos you put up. How's your butt feeling? And I didn't respond to that. Then on July 3rd, 2014, he says, oh, and I still have your glasses. Don't know if you wanted to get them soon. I think he got a really big kick out of having me come over and spend time with him and trust him while he was harassing me. So he invited me over to record a lot during this time. Then on July 5th, he says, hey, can I get your opinion on this? And sends me a Dropbox link. And then July 11th, he says, did you listen? Yeah? No? 
and sends me a sad face. And there was some personal information in my response, so I'm not including the screenshot, but I just lied to him and said that I was on vacation. I believe this was right around a brief stint of sobriety that I had, so I started to pull away because I just never felt good when I interacted with Anthony, but I was always too terrified to tell him the truth because I was afraid of his anger. Even not being aware that he was stalking and harassing me, I was still afraid of his wrath. That should just tell you something right there. Now, this is a super important piece of evidence that I stumbled upon. When Britta Filter messaged me and went through the laundry list of harassment that I had endured, they mentioned having a grainy video of me singing and playing piano. That video is an unlisted video, and the only person I've ever sent the link to was Anthony. That video is still on my YouTube channel to this very day. I never deleted it. What kind of made my skin crawl after remembering this was the screenshot I had taken of the conversation. It starts with Anthony saying, trust me. I said, KK, let me log on. Oh, by the way, I have a video with some music I've written too. And he says, send them both. And I send the link. There's the music one. Ugh, it's telling me I need more space. And he says, on Dropbox, that was unrelated. That was for a different song I was working on at the time. Pretty creepy stuff. So this is the last conversation I had with Anthony while I was still in the dark about what he and Shannon were doing to me. I was sober here and I was starting to pull away, but I was still too afraid to just tell him I didn't want to be in contact anymore. He said, oh, and I don't know if it's a concern for you, but I got a new phone and don't have your number. May I have this? And I gave him my number. <sighs> I wish I didn't, but I did. And I said, I also got a new phone a few days ago. And he said, mm-hmm, that sounds about right. I just stopped following him. Too, too silly. And that's awesome. Want me to just text you? I mean, instead of here. And I said, yeah, sure. Got it. And he said, ah, yes. Then later he messaged me and said, friend. So guys, this is actually the last conversation I had with Anthony. We really didn't talk too much in 2016, so that's probably why I forgot these messages even existed. And I definitely knew that he was dating Shannon at this point. Here you can see me being friendly but relatively dismissive about a message he sent after I posted a workout pic because one, I didn't want to be friends with him anymore and two, I knew he was dating Shannon. Also, I find it kind of weird that he had to clarify why he didn't make that comment publicly. I mean, now I realize he didn't make it publicly because he didn't want Shannon to see him complimenting my body. Let me rephrase that backhandedly compliment my body. Again, he is fully aware that I have struggled on and off with an eating disorder, yet he continues to make these backhanded compliments about my body. This is why I can't imagine the kind of mind games that he's played with Shannon, especially when it has to do with me. He never strictly told me that Shannon was his girlfriend. He was always really vague about their relationship label and usually just called her the girl that he was seeing. Eventually, I just put two and two together and realized they were dating, but I always thought it was really weird that he was never 100% clear about his relationship with Shannon because he had one or maybe two other girlfriends after we had dated and he was perfectly comfortable telling me those girls were his girlfriends. And I'm not bringing this up to be bitchy. I'm bringing this up because I truly believe that Anthony had a lot from Shannon. Even though the things that Shannon did to me were unconscionable and cruel, I believe that she was also a victim here. I believe that Anthony played on her hatred for me, as well as her emotional dependence on him. For God's sake, she dropped everything to go live out of her car, an experience she herself called absolutely miserable, just to be with him. I will never forgive or forget what Shannon did to me. And her being a victim doesn't excuse her horrible behavior. But I do think it's important we acknowledge that. My goal here is not to destroy Shannon or hurt Shannon. I want people to believe me. This was many years of my life. And because I didn't want to rock the boat, I didn't want to upset them, I hid and I kept quiet, and I only mentioned having a stalker here and there because I was afraid of them. They got me fired from a job, a job that was the only thing that came in between me using and me being sober, that allowed me to afford a room. They made it seem like they were in my town taking pictures. They made me feel unsafe in my own home, and I expressed that to them, and I asked them to stop, to leave me alone, 
and they refused. This has completely changed the way I live my life. Anytime I load my kids into the car, I examine every single car that drives by on our street. I try to hurry up and load them when there are no cars on the street at all. I am always constantly looking over my shoulder. At one point, everything scared me. I was paranoid of everything and everyone, and it has damaged my ability to have intimate friendships with people because I don't trust people. And I'm having to relearn how to trust, how to not be paranoid, and how to not be afraid. I'm also learning how to stand up for myself and not just hide and be quiet because it's the easiest thing to do. I did the right thing. And I'm not mad at the people who are skeptical. I'm not mad at the people who wanted to wait until more things came out. I'm not mad at the people who didn't want to make videos right away. I don't care about that. What I do care about is being able to speak up. And I'm glad that I did. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.